Ridgeway ignored my jest. I heard the swivel chair creak as he stood up to greet me. I admire a man who is timely, he said. It's good to see you, son. He offered his hand, and I took it. His faded blue eyes met my own. Pull up a chair, he said, and set yourself. An old barrel-back saloon chair stood nearby, and I pulled it over to the desk and eased into it. As I glanced about the room, it seemed at first little change since my last visit. The rusted old stove still stood at its center, squat and solid on stubby iron legs. Navajo rugs in black, red, and white designs lay atop the oiled wood of the floor. High on the south wall, a dusty mounted pronghorn head looked down its nose through glassy eyes. Bookshelves and file cabinets stood against the wall behind Ridgeway, beneath a fly-specked map of Montana territory and a furled American flag. Even so, there was something about that room that seemed different to me. As my eyes grew accustomed to the light, I began to notice the changes. A second desk and chair that had once occupied the far side of the room were missing. I noticed unfaded squares on the walls where pictures had hung. All at once, in the shadows, I saw packing crates and boxes filled with papers, files, and law books. Before I could ask it, Ridgeway answered my question. Moving, he said. I'll be shifting my headquarters to the capital in Helena this month. I've taken offices on the second floor of the good kind block. He took in the room and its contents with a sweep of his hand. Freighters will be in to pack all this plunder later this week. From a coat pocket, Ridgeway produced the curved briar he favored and filled it from a leather pouch. He took his time tamping the bowl, glancing at me now and then from beneath his eyebrows. I waited, knowing the old lawman would not be hurried, and that he would get around to the point of our meeting when he chose. Finally satisfied with all his preparations, he popped a match alight with his thumbnail, held the flame over the briar's bowl, and puffed away like a locomotive building up steam. Finally, when he had the pipe burning to his satisfaction, Ridgeway leaned back in his chair and studied me again. Blue smoke hung in layers above us, swirling in the afternoon light. The marshal picked up a folded paper from his desktop, unfolded it, and studied it for a moment. Then he folded it again and put it aside. He looked at me and asked, How much do you know about the Crow Indians? His question caught me off guard. I guess I had expected him to ask about Glenn Murdoch or how things were in Dry Creek, or even how I'd been since I saw him last, but he had not. 